Rub up your engines! Okay, today I'm going to show you how to find and fix coolant leaks. In the case of this Toyota Matrix, it's dripping coolant. So, how do you figure it out? Well, really pressure testing is the best. Now, this particular OTC pressure test is cool because it's got an inflatable bladder, so it fits many different vehicles. You don't have to worry about buying all the stupid adapters that you need with a lot of other ones. So we open the hood, then go to the radiator cap, take it off, stick this inside. It just fits in the hole and the sides clamp on. You get it so the ridge down here is under this ridge so it doesn't pop off. Then you tighten this valve in. When you tighten the valve, it's best to use a little pair of pliers. You tighten the valve. Then you pump it up and here you see it's going to the bladder. That says bladder. That means the bladder's full. Then you push the button to switch it and pump the system up. It's now pressurizing the system. In this case you're doing it at 15 psi. Then we'll see where the leak comes from. Now looking all around, I don't see any leaks on the top, so let's jack it up. Then we can look at leaks from the bottom. And what do we see under here? Unfortunately, there's nothing dripping under here either. Customer says it's dripping on them, but it's not dripping now. Now in a case of your pressure tested, you don't see any drips, but it's leaking. Often that's the water pump, and it'll only leak when it's running, so let's start it up. Sometimes it takes the extra pressure of the engine spinning, the engine getting hot to make the leak show. So let's run it a while and see if we can find a leak now. When I look inside here, the light on, it's a water pump that's starting to leak. Realize it's not always simple finding a leak. Sometimes it only occur when the engine is running. So now it's off to get a water pump. Now since the water pump's run by the fan belt, we gotta take the fan belt off first. And in this case, there's a tensioner. It's a 19 millimeter nut. We get a socket and an extension and put it on, and then push. Push it down, the belt gets loose and you can remove it. And in this case, the alternator's in the way too, so we're gonna onball all the alternator and electronics and move them out of the way. And we're gonna put a piece of Gorilla duct tape over the positive terminal here from the alternator, so it won't touch metal and short anything out. Then we can unbolt the alternator. There's a 14 millimeter bolt on the bottom. <sighs> Whew, you're not kidding, it's on there. I'm gonna get my 14 millimeter giant socket. Long extension bar again, put that on. Then, we should be able to break it loose. There we go. Now I can use the regular wrench. They're often very hard to break loose. And out it comes. Then we'll move the top bolt. The top one I believe is a 12 millimeter. And we can use our finger now. Ooh, wait, that one's long. I think my hand's gonna fall off pulling on it. Success. And these things are generally stuck in, so we'll pry it at the pry bar and then wiggle it a little. It's always fun getting them off. Finally, it's out of the way. And now we can access all the nuts and bolts to hold the water pump in. Makes a lot easier job. But now to reach the other ones, we gotta take the wheel off. So off we go. So take the shield and push it out of the way. And finally, all the wiggling and struggling, there's the old broken pump. Now, of course, we compare the two. We got the same bolt holes, and we got a new gasket. The kit comes with a gasket. As a tip, never try to reuse these old gaskets. You don't want to do all this work only to have that leak. Now, the trick here is, as you can see, the rubber gasket goes into the hole here. It fits in here, but it'll keep falling out, so you need a little glue. I like this 3M black. You get a little bit of it, and you put it on the inside of the ring. You put a little bit around the inside of the ring in certain spots so it'll stay in place. We don't want it falling out. Put it on the inside, then you push it in the hole. As you can see here, I pushed it in with the glue facing in. And now comes the hard part, patience. You want to wait half an hour for the glue to dry. Because the last thing you want is when you slide this in to have the gasket go sideways, then it's going to leak. Wait about half an hour for this weather stripping to dry so the rubber seal stays in place. And now the glue is dried, so we're going to slip the water pump in. And then we tighten all the bolts up that hold it in place. Don't miss them, they're hard to see. So what you can do is look at the old one and make sure you put all of them in the holes. Here's the old one, you can count all the holes. Make sure you put them all in. And of course, don't forget to go onto the bottom and get the bolts on the bottom too. Don't slip the alternator back on. Not much room, but doable. 
especially with gravity. It's easier with gravity. Then we tighten the 14 millimeter bolt on the bottom of the alternator and the 12 millimeter bolt on the top. Then you have to put the drive belt, you call it the fan belt, whatever you want back on. I printed out a picture of where it went ahead of time. Now, if you don't have that, get your camera. Take a picture of it before you take it apart. You'll know exactly where it goes. There's only one belt. Then you pull on the tightener and ah, slip the belt on. And there she goes. The belt's on. All we have to do is plug the alternator back in. We'll just bolt that back on and snap the charging wire on. Then fill it up with the old coolant you saved. Now you notice this coolant had a little sealer in it. Obviously at some point in time this thing had a leak so somebody added sealer. Leave the sealer in. Don't take it out. The sealer's probably sealing things that you don't want to leak again. Then start it up. Then let it warm up for about half an hour. Keep adding coolant until it's to the top to get the air out. So the next time your car starts leaking coolant, now you know how to check for leak and how to fix it. Even if it's something as hard to find as a water pump that only leaks when the car is running. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Well, GM is at it again. They're recalling 463,995 Silverados, Cadillacs, GMC Sierras. They have a software air in their ABS system, the electronic stability control, the system stops working, but the warning light doesn't come on to tell you that the system isn't working. It's one thing when you have an ABS system that has a problem and you see the ABS light is on, then you know, okay, the ABS light is on. The ABS system is not going to work now. You realize you don't have ABS now. So if you're on ice, you know you're going to have to pump your brakes and you're going to have to drive differently. Well, in the case of these GM vehicles, hey, it's not warning that the system doesn't work. The system just stops working. And then if you think it's working and you just step on the brakes, it doesn't stop it and then you'll slide all over the place. Now, the recall doesn't start until January. January 27th, 2020. And what they're going to do is reprogram the system. So it doesn't cost you anything. But here we go again. You know, GM has always had weak electronics. And when they start adding all this stuff on, really complex electronics, obviously not only do they have weak electronics, but they have weak software writers too, because they didn't write the software right for the stuff. You'd think that they would test the stuff out thoroughly before they sell it to the public, but I guess in their case, they don't, or they don't care, just like the problem they had with those ignition switches not going bad. They knew they were going bad. Not only did they not tell anybody, but they hid the fact by changing the part numbers when they made new ones so people wouldn't know that there was a problem and there are different part numbers for it. They got caught with their hands in a pie in that one and here they go again. You know, you'd think they'd learn, but I guess just don't buy one of those things in the first place, then you won't have to deal with it. Chris C. Watt says, hey, I'm after an SUV car. My options are a Kia Sportage, BMW X3, Nissan Cash, Mazda CX-5. I probably wouldn't have picked any of those to start out with, but out of those, the Mazda CX-5 would be your best bet if it's a late model one. Mazda used to have some stuff going around with Ford, and they had problems with a lot of their four-cylinder engines that had motorcraft parts that were breaking, especially the variable valve time and stuff that's in them. Now, Mazda has more a relationship with Toyota. Mazda and Toyota now have a factory, I believe it's in Alabama, somewhere in the south, and they're making Toyotas and Mazdas on the same assembly line, not in different lines, on the same line and the same factory. The Mazda engine quality actually seems to be going upwards from what I can see. So in the past, I was always poo-pooing Mazdas because they had horrible automatic transmissions, but now they're actually designing better ones. I get a customer with a two-year-old one, and it's a great vehicle. I just checked it out for him the other day. He wanted me to go over it, and I said, no, it's still an excellent shape. So out of those, the Mazda would make the most sense. Fireflame 1495 says, Scotty, I bought an 07 Corolla with 75,000 miles. I noticed the coolant level in the reservoir tank was between low and full. I know I should put some coolant in, but I'm restricted to only use Toyota's coolant. Can I use something else? Toyota uses a Hot coolant. It's pink. Hybrid organic acid technology. You can use any hot coolant you want. I've got three gallons sitting in a driveway because I work on a lot of Toyotas and I buy it from Xerox. Xerox makes one. Anybody that makes hot coolant. Now, the one I buy, the Xerox, it's also pink, so they want to keep the color thing. The color is just a dye. It means nothing. And usually on a thing like the Xerox, it'll say good for Toyotas, Lexus, and you know you got the right one. You don't have to buy the dealer one where they charge twice what they do with the auto parts stores. It's just Toyota. You know, it says Toyota on it, the dealer, but Toyota doesn't make coolant. They just buy them from another company. I don't know which company makes them for Toyota. It might even be Xerox. I don't know. But <laughs> they'll make their own. So as long as you get the HOAT and it'll say on the outside, good for Toyotas and stuff, you can use that. 
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.